Hey, what up, guys? Old Seven here again, and this is another installment of the dual weld versus two hand. So I have my two hander now, the uh, tyrannical, about halfway through the season, I guess. Uh, it's time to invest in that so we can do some arenas and whatnot. Uh, so I'm messing around with the setup a little bit. What I'm finding out is several things. Uh, number one, you have to change up from blood tap. You have to uh, completely remacro all of my skills, my obliterates, and uh, it's a completely new style of play going um, from two hand to dual wield for several reasons. With uh, two hand, you really have to wait and sit on top of your runes until you're, uh, you're a killing machine procs. And you're going to really see the difference in style of, of my play. One thing I really do like about uh, two hander is the huge obliterate crits. We'll never get anything like that with dual weld. Dual weld is a constant pressure. You know, 60 to 80k frost strikes. Uh, with uh, obliterates proc, you're, you're hitting 150 to so some up to 200k. It's sick. Um, but you really have to sit on those things. The so regular obliterate is probably like 70k. Where once you sit on those uh, ruins, let proc, obliterate hits real big. Um, so I'll show you the play style that's different from from uh, two hands to dual weld. So just kind of stay tuned, check it out, and we'll go through first on the dummies, and then we'll play into some uh, battlegrounds, kind of show you what these things are doing. All right, here we go. <clears throat> We're gonna mess around with these Raiders training dummies to show you the difference in the uh, two-hander that I usually uh, don't run. But I've been playing around with it a little bit. Let's first start off with my <clears throat> reforging and <clears throat> all my stats. My uh, reforged stat priority that I work with outside of resilience and uh, PvP power is, of course, I always stack into resilience first. I like PvP power. Then I'll go into strength. With two-hander, I'm going to go haste, then crit, then mastery. I don't like that because I like the uh, the frost strikes that hit pretty hard, so I'm not going to have big frost strikes like I would with uh, two-handed or with a dual weld. But, like I said, these uh, obliterate crits are pretty sick. So uh, let's go ahead and beat up on this uh, <coughs> Raiders training dummy a little bit. Now we're going to check out, watch the DPS meters, and I'll go ahead and do a, we'll do a full minute burst. What I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to sit on top of my uh, uh, my obliterates. Wait, let it go ahead or sit on top of my runes, let the obliterates proc and, and hit them. It's going to give you an idea of what I'm going to try to do. So let's get our little timer out here. All right, here we go. We're going to fire this thing up. Okay, check that. I'm on the wrong button. There we go. Sorry about that. Wrong button. All right, so we're hitting pretty big uh, obliterates right now. Uh, the problem is you don't have to wait on these uh, runes, so I got two seconds before I can dump this out. All right, and there it is. And I can dump all my runic power. And watch up here. There it is. That's going to proc. That's going to go ahead and uh, let my uh, runes speed up real quick. Now I can go ahead and drop my obliterates again. Now they're doing 140. There's another one, pretty big one. Now watch what happens when my damage. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do an obliterate without a proc. See, it's doing 65 or so, and that's not too good. But when they proc, they're doing big, big damage, which I like. All right, 52 seconds now. Let's go ahead and do another round. Let's do a two-minute round. And we have a few more seconds till my... Uh, there it is, my Pillar of Frost is up. Now watch. These, um... The Blitter is going to hit harder the more um, dots that are on them. I have Outbreak into my... Um, burst. See, there it goes right there, all three. Now I can go ahead and dump my runic power. Just 200k crit. And that's pretty hardcore. There we go, another one. Just another 200k. I mean, that's pretty nasty. Now I can do a regular one just to build my runic power up. Now make sure you watch up here. See, there's my um, runic power, or whatever you want to call that thing. I'll show you in a minute. Now let's go ahead and just do some empty uh, obliterates. I like when Ryan procs a free uh, Howling Blast. And. Let's go ahead and stop there for a moment. Let's go ahead and let I'm gonna let these diseases die off for a moment. <clears throat> Alright, while they're dying off, you see the DPS is like it's not as big as a dual weld because the dual welds are having I'm I'm uh, expecting the mastery. So when I'm expecting the mastery, 
the AOE damage is critting pretty hardcore, so you need a lot more AOE damage. So in dual weld, uh, what I'm finding out is that you're getting more AOE damage and, and hitting crits for um, uh, for your frost fervors and your blood plagues. And that's where the big damage comes into. So it's really good pressure in RBG, which is why I always run dual weld RBGs. I love it. Uh, now with the two hander, it's big time damage on a single target, as you saw. Now let's go ahead and check out our overall damage. All right, we're doing about 5 million damage on a single target. And if you remember, on a one minute burst on my dual weld, check that video out, I was doing about 6 million damage. But again, rem remind me, I remind you this. The dual weld, like I said, AoE damage, a lot of pressure on a single target, but not as much as a two handed. Now that's pretty much how um, the difference in two handed dual weld. Now just to kind of recap, I dual weld in RBGs. I two-hander in duels and arenas because you're really facing single targets in arenas and duel and on duels. So um, I hope this helps you out. Let's go ahead and check out the difference in play style. Now, when I'm doing dual welding, I use a blood tap. The reason why I do blood tap is I macro it into my howling blast, and um, that way I always have howling blast up, never starved for ruins. And I dump my un um, unholy ruins into my um, plague strike. But here I got to go with Runic Corruption, and the reason for that is so that I, excuse me, Obliterate takes Frost and Unholy, so you would have to have 10 um, charges on Blood Tap up, which is not very good. Uh, if you want to use your Obliterate, you have to use your Blood Tap twice, which means you have to use Frost Strike. Um, you almost have to have full Frost Strike to dump out your Obliterates. To dump out your Blood Taps just to get one Obliterate up. So I'm going to go with Runic Corruption for uh, two-hander. Um, for that reason alone, because it's not it's not um, it's not very uh, not a very good uh, skill for blood tap to use for obliterates. Um, but there's that. And again, my st I'm gonna go ahead and show you my reforging of my gems. There's my mastery. I'm 22, whereas two hander or dual wield, I'm doing 29 um, percent, percent mastery. PvP power hasn't changed. Now here's where the big change comes from: is the haste. Usually I'm at 51% in dual weld, and you see two hundred I'm at 60%, which does give me quicker uh, ruining generation. And when you have that higher haste, your your uh, killing machines proc uh, much more often. So what we'll do now is show you a couple clips that call to arms is Altrack Valley. I love the big maps. You can do a lot of uh, a lot of team fights in those. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple of the obliterate um, procs and the uh, crits that they hits for. Um, you drop targets much quicker, single targets anyway, like I said. So let's uh, check out these clips and i uh, show you some proof that the difference between dual weld and uh, two hand. Alright guys, here we are. We're going to do this uh, Ultra Valley. I'm going to skip through some of the fights that really don't really matter. Um, but before we go into this first boss, catch the chamois off guard a little bit. Let's go ahead and fire this up and uh, get this thing moving. And uh, I'll kind of walk you through step by step and we'll kind of look at the damage together. And I, I'm using tidy plate so it does have a tendency to uh, hide the damage that's done so I'll try to help you out with um, <clears throat> to kind of point out how much damage it's doing. Now, I know that this uh, first boss doesn't have any PvP resilience. At the end of the last hit, it's like a 200k um, obliterate. It's pretty cool. But uh, you really can't, I can't really gauge uh, my obliterates off of hitting this uh, you know, NPC player. But notice that my runics are right, right down here. I can't have to sit on these runes. There's not much I can do. I'm still sitting on this obliterate. I don't want to use the killing me the uh, frost strike, but I may have to just to get uh, something over here prop. See, there's your there's another a frost strike at 71k. That's not bad, but there's a 160k hit on the obliterate. Let's see if we can get another one going here. So I don't have my ruins up for another obliterate. It's not gonna have for three seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it into a frost strike. All right now, here comes another obliterate. I'm sure. I've watched this next obliterate, it's pretty sick. 218, that's pretty cool. But again, he's an NPC. Alright, now here we're going to sneak up on this Holy Poly. Let's see what we can do with him. I notice I have to get my dots up. Um, the more dots I get up, the uh, the bigger hits on obliterate. This big uh, killing list engine. See that 142k obliterate is kind of like a, a finishing chaos bolt. Uh, which I, I like, but again, again, I'm 
kind of indifferent. Well, not much say indifferent, but I'm still favoring dual world right now in, RB, in uh, RBGs. Now, notice though, when that Ryan procs again, if that's a free uh, Howling Blast for me, which I don't mind. But the Howling Blast aren't, isn't a lot of damage when I'm specced into a two hander. Uh, because uh, Howling Blast really relies on mastery. Here we go to beat up on this poor chamois. Right, and I know Tony has one dot, he has Frost Favor, so I'm gonna see if I put Blood Play on him. And I'm probably not going to. Here, the big problem when I'm playing, and I, I, I kind of get tunnel vision here because down here you see my burst. Whenever that's up, tell me when I have the burst available to me. Of course, my burst is going to use one um, Bell uh, reflection. frost rune, but I didn't, haven't used it yet. Uh, couldn't tell you why I'm not using that. Why I'm not using that burst. Usually, in the right corner of my eye, when I see that up, I'll go ahead and use the burst when I'm getting ready to get into a fight. That's pretty much it with this battleground. Um, do more running than anything else, and I like I don't like to beat up on the on Drek. I like to go around and kill other people. But uh, I think this is going to finish up the uh, the battleground, and my end damage is not too bad given that I've only only fought like five or six people in the boss. Let's just see what his end damage is. I think it's like I don't know five or six million something like that. There we go. It's like five million. But see those killing blows. All those are pretty much off of obliterates. Um, and again, I only engaged like five or six people, so you can see that I got the killing blow on almost every single person I engaged in. Not too bad. But uh, there it is, guys. It is the two hander in a, in a battleground on the dummy. Um, like I said, big single target damage, um, not very much AoE. Uh, dual wield, big AoE damage, mediocre single target damage. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and feel free to leave a comment and argue your case. And uh, of course, I'm always going to listen. I'm open to uh, to hearing your side of it and dual world versus two hand.